Your son Riley is a top amateur skater. What advice have you given him about pursuing a life as a skater? When did he start? What, oh man, he's been skating since he was like three or four years old. He came, went through a phase when he was about, sort of when he turned when he became a teenager, mm -hmm. he kind of stopped skating, he started riding motocross a bit, and uh, I think because he felt that pressure of being my son, and he felt like people were just expecting too much of him, and he just wanted to do it in his own way. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came back to it because a lot of his friends were skating. I, I actually had a talk with him then, and I said, look, I know you, you, know, you like riding motorcycles, you like surfing, and all the stuff, but you're really good at skating for your age. You know what I mean? Like you really do have a talent for it. It's not just because you've grown up around it and, and I, push, I haven't pushed him at all. I just said, you really are exceptional for your age. And if you, you, know, if you think you're gonna make a career out of one of these sports, it's probably gonna be skating because you're that far ahead of everyone yeah. at, at age 13. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, he really took it to heart. And then um, later on, somewhere around when he was 17, yeah, he was about 17. I actually sat him down and I said, look, Riley, you're, you're really good now. I mean, like beyond just being good for your age, you're, you are an innovative skater on your own. And I feel like you could make something of this and make a career out of it. And you should probably actively pursue sponsorships and, and maybe sort of working at that a little bit more. And he took that to heart and, and eventually left Birdhouse. <laughs> See what I did to myself? <laughs> Um, but I'm proud of him because he's got, you know, he's got his own sponsor. He's on Baker, he's on Quicksilver, he's on Spitfire, Indy, um, and he's killing it, you know, and people really respect his talents because he did make it on his own. Talk about Birdhouse and uh, how it came to be formed. Like, was that something that you intended or do you think that that was just like, laid out for you and you just looked around and boom, there it was. Uh, I was riding for Powell. Mm -hmm. I was still on the Bones Brigade. Things were kind of going sour in terms of, well, the, the people's perception of what Powell was and, Powell and obviously the, you know, the sales and, and us, like the, the Bones Brigade guys were considered sort of the older vert guys out of style. And, and I thought my career as a skater was sort of coming to an end. And, I was like, I want to do something. I want to still be in, in skateboarding, and I would like to do something in my own direction. Base it on good skating. Yeah. That's what I want to do. And I, and I went and and picked a few guys that I thought were the, you know, were, were the best innovative skaters of the time, and we just made our own way and, and started doing. It, it was super fun because it was like, I don't know, it was like our lemonade stand. You know, anything goes. We <laughs> we were making our own videos, selling them for five bucks. Um, and, uh, and just like living it, really living it. And, and um, it was fun, but it was hard for the first four years, five years, because skating was just down. Yeah. And if you're a little company, you're really hurting. Yeah. It's cyclical though. You know? it, well, that's, that's what we believed. Yeah. You know? And that's why I started it then. I said, yeah. if we start a company now, when skating's at its deadest point, it, it, we're gonna make a mark in skating now. Yep. And then if it starts to rise again, we're already sitting up here as, as a recognized brand. You know, I'm so glad team. that like our audience got to hear you say that. Because <laughs> then they understand like how you build a brand. You've got to be unafraid of the winter to know that you'll reach the summer. Yeah. You know, and just, well, and, and, just and now, I mean, it. if you want to start a brand now, it would be mm -hmm. that much harder to yeah. rise above everything else. It's possible. Yeah. But you're going to have to work that much harder at yeah. it. Boom Boom Huck Jam. Do you plan to bring it back? Uh, if we can get... A, if we can get a good sponsor that's willing to sort of underwrite the whole tour. Yeah, but it, that's hard these days. When we first started that, we could bring it to a company and say, look, you could be the title sponsor of this, your name's on all the advertising, your name's on the, on the billboards, your name's on the, um, your name's on the uh, radio shows. So that just happened. Yeah. <laughs> Water? <laughs> Thank you. So that's cool, sponsor. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's cool. I mean, who wouldn't want to sponsor that? Well, I, I we perform there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we perform Rockstar yeah. with Berlin, right? Yes. <sighs> yeah, that you was know a what blast. it's like. Do you know what it's like to be on stage performing your song 
with you guys just totally, totally, totally just like letting it rip. Like that was crazy. For me to, to be able to do that kind of event and have your band play is ridiculous. Like, you know, through the years we had some pretty insane, we had Devo play, Yeah. Uh, we had Offspring, we had um, Social Distortion, you know, bands that like I grew up with. I mean, when, when Devo played, like that, that was my dream come true. That was, that was my moment, because yeah. that, that's the band that I listened to through and through all the years at the skate parks and, and, uh, and I'm skating and they're playing Girl You Want on the deck of the ramp. That was, yeah. that was, that was ridiculous. That was the first time I ever did 900 at Huck Jam. Wow. Was that that night? Wow. Yeah, and that 900. <laughs> that 900. <laughs> it's, oh, it's still a big deal to me. I mean, yeah, you know, that, that <laughs> it's a huge that, deal. That changed my life. Yeah, it's crazy. And how old were you when you did that? Uh, phew, what is that? 99, 31. <laughs> Come on. Come on. That's like a that's a huge deal. That that was amazing. So when you're skating now, do you still have a desire to learn new tricks? Always. Yeah. Still, I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to break any height or, or length or spinning records. I, I like still tinkering with what's, I mean, there's so many things you can do with your yeah. skateboard and yeah. grinds and, and yeah. maneuvers and, and stuff that you don't, you know, knock yourself out doing. So that's kind of my focus now. I mean, I literally just released a video part while well, it came out today mm -hmm. um, for Independent. And uh, it's pretty much all new tricks. Independent. You know how many independent t-shirts we've won in our lives? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. And do you like still enjoy competing? No, I mean, to be honest, like I did, I competed for 20 years of my life. Yeah. It kind of consumed me. Yeah. And you know, it was, it was all, well, it was a big deal in my youth because that's all, that's all you could do. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't compete, then see you later. You're not going to make a living in doing this. Yeah. Uh, and now there are different ways to make a living. I mean, when I started Huck Jam, that was my exit from competition. Mm. I thought, I can do an event that's big and it doesn't have to be all about battling each other. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be about working together and doing choreography and stuff like that. So um, I don't really miss it because I, you know, I, I got kids and yeah. I don't want to chase that yeah. trophy right. the whole time. Yeah. Well, you have nine of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's nine. Um, you gave a deck to the Smithsonian for the, yeah. to begin their collection. What was the uh, significance of giving them the board for you? Oh, it was just, it was like beyond a dream come true. I, I can't imagine that I would be immortalized in the Smithsonian. You know what I mean? Like everything, I don't know, I just feel like the, the stuff that I get to do, I didn't dream of any of this stuff because it just wasn't on the radar of, of skateboarding being popular when I was a kid. And so if you, if you dreamt big of being a skater as when I was a kid, you dreamt of getting your picture in a magazine and maybe some free stuff. That's it, you know what I mean? And, and maybe you'd be invited to the Skateboarder Magazine Awards. Mm -hmm. But no one was making a killing at it. No one was on TV hardly. No, one, no one's being invited to the Smithsonian or to be on cartoons and stuff like that. So all these things that I get to do, or they're, they're like these bizarre dream come true. You know, it's just like, I we never imagined that. So to be on The Simpsons, to be in The Simpsonian, the stuff that is just like, it's just gravy, it's insane to me. And I appreciate it, you know, I don't, I don't take for any of it for granted. 20 years from now, what are you doing? Are you still skating? Uh, I'm sure I'm still skating, maybe not um, in public. <laughs> yeah, a park in your backyard is a big, that's the Oh, big. it's, it's ridiculous, yeah. yeah. I got a course in my backyard. That was the, okay, so what, what I'm, you know, I was talking about what, what are, what's the dream when you're a kid? That yes. was the dream, so true. Yes. Skate park in your backyard. Yes. You know what I mean? Not to be on TV, not to be in movies, whatever. It would be like, my own place, my yeah. own park. Yeah. yeah. And then what are the businesses and endeavors? We have a hot clothing line um, and shoe line, and, and that's going really well. Work with Quicksilver for the designs and, and for the distribution and stuff like that. Um, other than that, you know, I'm trying to do video games still, and I think the big push is, is our YouTube channel, Ride Channel. Um, I worked really hard to get that going. And, Congratulations, uh, by the way. Oh, thank you. And so we're into our second year of it, and um, I'm really proud of the content, you know, and I feel like we finally have an avenue to reach people, um, and, uh, and, you know, I'm really proud of, of the work that we're doing on it. Yeah. Good job, by the way. Oh, thanks. I'm right here with the, the living guy, the spirit in this body that's done all these amazing things. And I can't thank you enough and tell you like there wouldn't be an NERD if it weren't for you. And it gave us a sounding board um, 
which was kind of like her skateboard. I can hear the skate influence in NERD, yeah. for sure. I mean, I picked it up right when it dropped. That vibe and that, that renegade and do-it-yourself attitude, I love it. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. We would not exist. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Hi guys, Pharrell Williams here with Artist Talk. Make sure you don't miss any of the episodes here on the Reserve Channel. I'm sitting here with the coolest of the coolest, my new teacher, Henry Rollins. Music is the most amazing thing humankind has ever achieved. It's so emotionally grounded where you come from. You have to burn so much neural tissue on stage. You are pushing so many calories. Why would I hold back? So much of it is directed by the soul and the spirit of what you expect out of music. When I grow up, I want to be a pip. I want to be like, you know, in her backing uh, vocal group and go woo woo, but you know, never got the chance. Check it out.